Imagine you spent all of your life savings, uprooted your whole family, sold most of your earthly possessions to move to Canada, and now... And now you're willing to go back to your home country, a place that is rife with corruption, terrible crime, as well as failing infrastructure. What on earth makes Canada so terrible that someone would want to do that? I'm Christian Calgary and I help immigrants on their journey to Canada. I also collect really cool international Starbucks mugs. I'm an immigrant of 21 years here in Canada and I personally watched as my family has tried to move to this country and the immigration journey implode and then move back home. And I've discovered that there are about seven reasons that Canadians and immigrants are leaving Canada and one of them has to do with your spouse's inability to wash their own mug. There are many ways to get into Canada. Permanent residency, an LMIA job offer, a student visa, but not all these are created equal. And the interesting thing is I've heard so many people say to me directly, I'd be willing to scrub toilets to get into Canada. Here's the thing. These jobs have a variability of attractiveness and flexibility depending on the stream that you enter into the country on. If you land an LMAI job, it may seem awesome at first. You come into the country with a job security. But it's not what it seems. These jobs may not be what they were initially on paper, and you might be stuck with an employer for years. I personally know of someone, he got a job offer, then when he arrived was told, actually, you need to pay for retraining to do the job that you were offered to do, and you need to pay us to do it, and pay it off over several years. So it's not all that it seems to be, and you could be caught in a bit of an indentured servitude program, and that's not what you signed up for when you wanted to come to Canada. Also, side note, everyone in Canada pretty much cleans their own toilet. It's not as big a sacrifice as you think it is. One of the really tough things is that the cost of living in Canada has been going through the roof. To be fair, it's been happening around the world, but for some of these cities, which are international cities like Vancouver and Toronto, it's become insane. When I started this channel, I really thought my city could be an alternative to these places. But because these other places like Vancouver and Toronto have become so expensive, the cities like mine have become more attractive and thus more people have been coming to it and the cost of living has been increasing. Vibrant Communities did a study about living wages and the living wage in 2021 was 18 dollars and 40 cents. Now that has increased to $22 and 40 cents over the course of one year. And I won't even get into the rental market between these different cities. I mean, obviously where I live is still better than that, but it is insane how expensive it has become in Canada. And if you were basing your expectations on something even three years ago, you'll be incredibly surprised once you actually arrive in Canada and see how expensive it is to live with basic dignity. Listen, I love a rags to riches story just like the next person. The whole idea that someone can eventually get ahead. But the thing is, all of these stories have in common is that they have this beautiful montage where they take all of these crazy years of hard work and they squeeze them down to a few minutes and then you watch the protagonist take off. That's not what it's like. When you come to Canada not as a citizen, you are a second-rate citizen. You are not the exception to the rule. Your work experience outside of Canada doesn't count for much. More than that, your credentials only mean that you know how to study and you will more than likely have to redo and restudy part of your degree or your credentials in order to be able to do the job that you qualified to come to Canada for. It is mind-blowing, but you are not the exception to the rule. And you really have to think about it in terms of years. I mean, five to seven years of you working at beginner jobs, you relearning and redoing your credentials for you to finally get to the same place or just a little bit more ahead than where you are in your home country. And for some people, that is just too hard to do. They'd rather just go back home because it is really difficult to give up your most precious investment, and that is time. The next reason people have issues with Canada is that the healthcare system is not as good as it's made out to be. I've had someone actually write to me and ask, is the Canadian healthcare system a scam? Because it was not what they expected once they moved to the country. So I'm gonna give you a rundown of what exactly is going on over here. If you are deathly ill and you find yourself in an emergency room in Canada, you will be given health care and high quality health care and you will be looked after. However, 
If you are not deathly ill, the situation might look a little bit different. Canada has a really long wait list when it comes to GP or family doctors. Sometimes it honestly feels like the luck of the draw if you're able to find one, and sometimes you have to wait for years to be able to find someone. And unfortunately, people are starting to feel a lot more unlucky. You'll also find that healthcare really varies from province to province. What is true in Alberta is not true for Ontario. And what is great in Ontario might not be the best in Alberta. So it's really hard to make comparisons from province to province. So here's a bit of context. I came from a country where the public healthcare wasn't great at all, and I couldn't afford having private healthcare. So the Canadian system to me is actually pretty great. However, if you come from a country where you had access to private healthcare, which was really good, you're gonna find that the service and the timeliness was really great, and your expectations of what the Canadian system can do might be a little bit different, and it might be, quite frankly, quite frustrating. And as some people are in a difficult healthcare situation, moving back to their home country might actually be a good option. So life in your home country might be difficult because of corruption or crime, but it can still afford certain little luxuries and standards of living that you've become accustomed to. And it is the devil you know versus the devil you don't. Some people who are quite privileged live in countries like this where they can have a maid service. Because of economic disparity, they can have that service for quite relatively inexpensive. When they come to Canada, they realize it's actually pretty expensive to have that lifestyle and the transition is actually too difficult and too hard and they'd rather go back home. That example may sound a little bit bougie, but this could be manifested through a particular type of car that you drive or sending your children to a private school. All of these things kind of seem part of normal life, but when you come to Canada, you realize it's quite different. Here's the thing. Coming to a new country means you are uprooted from the entire world that you know. And then you heard about the friendliness of Canadians, like it's some sort of national export. And then you're surprised to find out that that friendliness is not what you thought it would be. Here are the hard realities. Canadians are very friendly and polite. They will listen to your philosophies and ways of being, and they will tolerate it, but they won't necessarily adopt it for themselves. And this is their way of making space for you. People will say that they like the idea of multiculturalism, but it's very superficial. What they mean by that is they want you to bring your delicious food to a potluck and enjoy it. It's pretty superficial. All of your philosophies, your lifestyles, anything that doesn't jive with them, they kind of want you just to leave at the door. So here's the thing, Canadians also don't want to be rude, so they'll never spell out these things to you very clearly. It will just take you years of trying to figure it out on your own. Or you could subscribe to this channel, I can give you all the shortcuts. Okay, here's the thing about wintry sadness. It's not that the Canadian winter can kill you in an instant. Yes, it can do that. It's the fact that winter is so long that it wages this war of attrition against your mental health. First, there's the survival side. That is when you have to buy gear, which can be expensive unless you follow a few of my tricks, and learn how to dress properly for the winter. And to thrive in a Canadian winter, you have to actually follow what Canadians do, and that is enjoy winter sports. But enjoying winter sports is really tough. If you haven't grown up snowboarding or skiing, they are difficult skills to acquire as an adult, plus pretty expensive. Skating's maybe a little less expensive, but you end up falling on your butt quite a lot. And then also, there's the fact that Canadians will often take a break from the winter. They'll fly down south to Mexico or Phoenix or California, and then they'll come back and they'll face the winter head on with a nice tan. But you, as a new immigrant who doesn't have a ton of money and you're at a beginner's survival job, you can't afford these luxuries and you're just stuck facing that winter head on. Bonus point, Canada is too liberal and a bit of a nanny state. A lot has changed in Canada due to a certain pandemic. A liberal government has taken certain steps like emergency payments to citizens, a vaccine passport, and unrelated, a freezing on the handgun market. All of these things could be really great depending on your political persuasion, or they could make you want to choke on your own coffee and make you feel like Canada is becoming a bit of a nanny state. And if you want to make sure you don't make any of the mistakes that immigrants do, make sure to watch my next video. Woo!